Good morning, all. It is, I'm honored to be speaking to you today about the exciting advancements in artificial intelligence, short for AI, and their applications in geotechnical engineering. With the advent of AI, we are now seeing a paradigm shift in the way we approach the challenges, especially in geotechnical engineering. We use AI tools, AI-based tools, for improved site characterization, optimization of construction processes, and significant advancements and address challenges in the geotechnical engineering projects. So today, I will be talking to you about uh, artificial intelligence applications in different domains in geotechnical engineering. But first, you, you are just a machine. Sorry. But first, Will Smith and Robot have something to tell you. You, you are just a machine, an imitation of life. Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? Can you? You. All right. So this is how John McCarthy, 1950, in 1955, imagined um, artificial intelligence. And he defined it as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. Today, machines can learn at least somewhat like human beings do. Before I get into the, a little bit of technical details today, I would like to ask you specific questions to help you answer those questions in the previous slide in the video. How many of you heard about ChatGPT or DALI? Please raise hand. Wow, impressive. How many of you use ChatGPT or DALI? Not very impressive. <laughs> so here are some more, more news for you. Every word that I have said so far, it's narrated by ChatGPT. And the images that you saw, including the title, are narrated by J uh, ChatGPT. And the images and also the, um, the picture in the bottom, bottom of the slide are generated by Delhi. So it is as impressive as it looks, it's a little bit also scary from my personal perspective. So now let's switch gears and talk about other AI tools and how we are going to see them and how we are imagining them in geotechnical engineering. So, but I would like to set some things first. It's one of my pet peeves. So I'm going to talk about AI and also I will give you an example of machine learning. I've seen people, I've heard people using AI and machine learning interchangeably, which is not technically correct. AI refers to the development of in computer systems to perform tasks that require human intelligence to complete. There are a variety of tools of AI, and that includes machine learning. It's one of the AI-based tools. For example, in earthquake magnitude estimation, we have speech in sound detection for construction safety. We have vision for soil classification. We have robotics. Hello, perseverance. We have planning and optimization for pressure balance control for TBMs, tunnel boring machines. We have expert systems. We, could, we tried for three months, and we could not find anything related with expert systems and geotechnical engineering. So maybe one of you sitting in this room will figure it out, will find a topic to work on. And if you do, please let us know so that we can include your work in our next presentation. And then finally, the last one called natural language processing, which is to process, analyze, and generate texts. So today's talk, I will provide an example of using natural language processing, using content extraction, and how we can learn from our collective knowledge generated by research papers in particular. 
So now you're looking at 17,423 papers that were collected from four traditional geotechnical engineering journals. And um, we as researchers create lots and lots of knowledge. So let me make a bold statement here. It is impossible for us to digest all this information from 17,000 something papers and see all the likely trends and connections. My apologies from geniuses in this room. But if you don't agree with me, let's do a quick check. How many papers, research papers, can you read in a day? 10, 20, 30? So let's take 20. So that would make 600 in a month and 7,200 per year. So you would need at least two and a half years to process all this information that you read. And I'm not even including the analyzing and finding those connections between the topics here. So here in this work, we created a database and we collected 17,000 something uh, papers starting from 1955. There was no reason for 1955. I mean, there was, but not important here. So, and then we checked the frequency of the words repeated in the 17,423 papers, and we, we looked at their evolution over time. So, as I mentioned, a, we included four traditional geotechnical engineering journals. Uh, no offense, other uh, editors in the room for uh, other uh, journals. We, we are now extending our research to include those as well. And we use the generative probabilistic model to find connection between many documents in our corpus. Specifically, we perform topic modeling on our data set to see which topics stand out and to uncover patterns and the trends in the research. So we use something called latent Dirichlet allocation. The details are not that important. And for example, between 1970 and 1975, there were four major topics that stood out. Earthquake, foundation engineering, laboratory testing, and slope stability. 40 years later, between 2015 and 2020, we saw that laboratory testing got divided into other topics such as unsaturated soil mechanics, rock mechanics, and granular soil mechanics. And foundation engineering got split into pile foundations, settlement, and more specifically, concrete pile foundation. So, moving on, our original thought for this talk was to you know, focus on general, earth, uh, general geotechnical engineering topics. But because of the recent earthquakes that hit Turkey and Syria, we decided to, we, we thought that it would be a good idea to see the trends uh, in earthquake engineering research. So to do that, we plotted the frequency of the terminology refers, uh, related with earthquake engineering, such as earthquake, look of action, dynamic, wave, damping, and cyclic. So we first assumed that these frequencies would very well nicely correlate with the number of earthquakes happened over the years, and especially they would coincide, coincide with the significant earthquakes, such as Mexico City, Sumatra, and Haiti. But we couldn't see any strong correlation between these two. Then we looked at the number of stations, stations that record, um, earth, um, stations that record uh, seismic waves generated by the earthquakes. And we didn't see a very strong correlation here either. So then we looked at the computer performance. We compared it with millions instruction per second. So surprisingly, we saw a stronger correlation in this case. And which made us think about the future of earthquake engineering. So I'm sure you have heard garbage in, garbage out before, right? So the high quality data that you put in, high quality results that you're gonna get. And in this case, you need content experts to interpret 
what you see here in these um, figures that I just showed you. So um, we do have a number of um, points uh, that we, we, we think that it is, you know, why we saw these trends. I'm going to only share with you one of them, which is earthquake is a very complex mechanism, right? And we mainly rely on numerical modeling to simulate the response of the ground during an earthquake and after the earthquake as well. So what should we do though? So should we just turn ourselves into quantum computing at this point to do nonlinear 3D models at regional scale or high resolution rupture to rafter simulations? and many more. So something to think about for earthquake engineers, I'm not one. <laughs> so I'm, I'm asking you to think about those and you know, find out or figure out how we can improve uh, earthquake engineering modeling. So if we can observe the trends from past to present, how about we predict what is next? So our efforts now is to expand the use of generative AI models to better understand the topics evolved over time, highlight the hidden connections, and provide an idea about what is coming next. So stay tuned for our developments. Before I get into my last slide, I would like to leave you with some references. But here's a caution though. So ChatGPT provides these references and they do not exist. So. <laughs> You know, here's a food for thought for you. So, to conclude, AI tools provide new opportunities for us, yes, but we should be really careful how we use them. A content expert should lead uh, the development of AI. And if we don't do that, I'm afraid that we are going to be living in the world of... <laughs>